This is a narrated version of Chapter 12, Crime Scene Characteristics. Crime Scene Characteristics. Crime Scene Characteristics are the features of a scene as evidenced by offender behavior related to decisions about the victim and the offense in accordance with their contextual meaning. They are established by a thorough crime reconstruction, the use of forensic victimology, and a timeline of known offenses related to behaviors. Crime scene characteristics include the following, location type, location of the scene, crime scene type, victim location, victim selection, point of contact, method of approach, method of attack, use of force, methods of control, weapons, victim response, nature and sequence of sexual acts, time, multiple offenders, planning preparation, precautionary acts, missing items, opportunistic elements, the body, staging, verbal behavior, scripting, location type. Location type refers to the physical environment when a crime, where a crime scene exists. There are four general types, indoor crime scene, outdoor crime scene, vehicle crime scene, underwater crime scene. Location of the scene. Location of the scene refers to the descriptive qualities of the crime scene. This includes its physical location and its relationship to the surrounding environment. Examples are GPS coordinates, access points, intersections, etc. Crime scene type. A crime scene is defined as an area where a criminal act has taken place. All crime scenes may, de may be described as primary, secondary, or territory crime scenes. Primary crime scene is the location where the offender engaged in the majority of his or her principal offensive behaviors. Secondary crime scene is the location where this, some of the victim-offender interaction occurred, but not the majority of it. Intermediate crime scene, any crime scene between the primary crime scene and a disposal site where there may be transfer evidence, dump site disposal site, a crime scene where a body is found, territory crime scene, any location where physical evidence is present, but there is no evidence of a victim offender interaction. Victim location. Victim location refers to the descriptive qualities of the victim's physical location immediately prior to encountering the offender. This information is essential to the timeline of events and can provide valuable information regarding potential suspects and witnesses. It will assist with determining who could have committed the crime, what they needed to know, what they had to be capable of, and who could have seen it. Victim selection. Victim selection refers to the process by which an offender chooses or targets a victim. Targeted victim. A targeted victim is the primary purpose of the offense, resulting directly from the offender's motive for committing the crime. Opportunistic victim. An opportunistic victim is ancillary to the offender. The victim is due to Availability, location, vulnerability, fantasy criteria, or symbolic criteria. Point of contact. Point of contact refers to the precise location where the offender first approached and acquired the victim. It includes location where the victim was encountered under some ruse devised by the offender, as well as locations where the offender may have attacked the victim and dragged him or her to some other pre-selected primary or secondary scene. Method of approach. Method of approach refers to the offender's strategy for getting close to the victim. Surprise. A surprise approach is characterized by an offender who gets close to the victim by lying in wait for a moment of vulnerability. A con. A con approach is characterized by an offender who gets close to a victim by use of deceptive or subterfuge. Pre-existing trust. A pre-existing trust approach is characterized by an offender who gets close to a victim by means of a relationship that currently exists or a past relationship that once existed between the victim and the offender. Method of attack. Method of attack refers to the offender's mechanism for initially overpowering a victim after making their approach. The method of attack may be described in terms of the weapon and the nature of force involved. Blitz. A blitz attack is characterized by an immediate brutal application of controlling, sexual, punishing, or lethal physical force aimed at incapacitating or killing the victim subsequent to the offender's approach. Use of force. The nature and amount of force that offenders are willing to use throughout their offense tells us a great deal about their skills, disposition, and motives. It should include a breakdown of when the offender used force and the related intent. Examples of, enforce, of force include the following. Lethal force, force, physically aggressive behavior that is sufficient to kill. Administrative force, behavior that is focused on the delivery of a specific purposeful amount of injury in order to accomplish a particular goal. Brutal force, physically aggressive behavior involving one or more injuries that result in tremendous damage, often to the point of death, and overkill, injury beyond the needed cause of death. Control-oriented force, physically aggressive behavior that is intended to restrict victim movements. 
corrective force, physically aggressive behavior that is delivered in response to or to prevent undesirable or harmful victim behavior, defensive force, physically aggressive behavior that is intended to protect the individual, administering it from attack, danger, or injury. Precautionary force, physically aggressive offender behavior that per results in wound patterns that are intended to hamper or prevent the recognition and coll collection of physical evidence. Experimental force, behavior involving force that fulfill non-aggressive psychological and often fantasy-oriented needs, and physical torture at the intentional and repeated infliction of non-lethal injury to conscious victim. Sexual force, aggression of coercion that relates directly to the satisfaction of erotic or libidious desires. Methods of control, an offender's method of control are those means used to manipulate, regulate, restrain, and subdue victim behavior during the offense. This can include the use of the following forms of force, control-oriented force, verbal threat or controlling, punishing, sexual, or lethal force, unarticulated presence of physical threat of controlling, punishing, sexual, or lethal force. Weapon. Weapon refers to any item found at or brought to the crime scene by the victim or the offender used for the purpose of inflicting injury. It is important not only to look at the type of weapon used, but also the physical injuries or wounds sustained by the victim. Physical injuries include the following. Blunt force trauma, burns, sharp force injury, including stab wounds, incise wounds, and chop wounds, gunshot wounds, therapeutic and diagnostic wounds, post-mortem versus anti-mortem wounds. Victim response. Victim response refers to the victim's reaction to the offender behavior. There are two categories of victim response, victim compliance and victim resistance, including passive resistance, verbal resistance, and physical resistance. Nature and sequence of sexual acts. A sexual act is any offender behavior involving sexual organs, sexual apparatus, or sexualized objects. Establishing their nature and sequence within the, an offense gives insight into offender modus operandi and offender signature. Time. The evidence in a case may allow the criminal profiler to determine the amount of time spent by the offender performing various criminal related tasks. Examples of evidence that may be used to determine the amount of time involved in the offense include testimonial evidence, victim and witness statements, forensic report, the medical examiner's report, entomology report, documentary evidence, including computers and cell phone records. Multiple offenders. The evidence in a case may allow the criminal profiler to provide an option as to whether multiple offenders were involved in the commission of the crime. Examples of evidence that may be used to support this opinion include physical evidence, examples, DNA, fingerprints, and wound patterns, testimonial evidence, including witness statements and victim statements, and documented evidence, um, example would be security footage. Planning and preparation. The extent of offender planning may be determined by assessing whether or not the offender possessed the means for the commission of a crime. A determination of the extent of the offender planning hinges on assessment of both precautionary acts and opportunistic elements. Precautionary acts refer to behaviors that an offender commits before, during, or after the offense that are consciously intended to confuse, hamper, or defeat investigative or forensic efforts for the purpose of concealing the offender's identity, connecting to the crime and the crime itself. Examples include disguise, alteration of voice, use of a blindfold, use of gloves, use of a condom. Missing items refer to any item that originally belonged at the crime scene and were not found during the crime scene investigation efforts. Evidentiary items include items that the offender believe may link him or her to the victim or to the crime. Valuables are items taken from the scene that the offender believe may have financial value. Personal items, items that have sentimental value to the offender, and there are two categories, including trophies and souvenirs. Opportunistic elements refers to any unplanned element that the offender seized on for inclusion in an offense. It can refer to the victim, offense, weapon, or location, anything that was not planned but was utilized during the offense. The body. In all cases, whether a victim is living or dead, the body is an extension of the crime scene. Staging. A staged crime scene is one in which the physical evidence has been purposefully altered by the offender to mislead authorities or misdirect the investigation. A precautionary act committed after an offense, staging should be considered a possibility in all crimes. Verbal behavior and scripting. Scripting refers to the language used by an offender during an offense as well as 
language he or she commands the victim to use. Scripting is used to direct the victim verbally and behaviorally. This ends this narrated version of this PowerPoint presentation.